Hey, welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast. I am joined by Brandon and Kyle. And yeah, Brandon's here again to talk about, of course, charging infrastructure. I feel like that's just what we always have you here for. Um, and we're going to talk about charging station design, more or less. Not the design of the chargers, although there's a lot of work to be done there. But also, where are they in the parking lot? You pull into a charging station because you're low on juice. What does it look like? Where do you go? Do you even have room to park? This is a conversation we're going to dive deep into. We're not going to talk about actual like accessibility or where they are in terms of from the highway and stuff like that. That's another episode. This is exactly mm -hmm. more specifically just where, how are they laid out when you get there? Um, and we have mm -hmm. a use case here, Brandon, because you ran into one recently. Um, and I'll pull the picture here for visual learners uh, if you're watching the <laughs> YouTube. And if you're on the audio, I guess, Brandon, how can you explain this? <laughs> Uh, so we have three charging units. All three of the charging units are capable of charging two vehicles simultaneously. Uh, we have four parking spots. We have two of the charging units with, with four of the charging ports are actually between two spots. One of those spots is signed as reserve parking with a handicap symbol. And then we have another dual charger that's in between but forward of the two spots uh, or the additional two spots. Hopefully yeah. that's a good description so of what have we have going on here. Big question right off the bat. <laughs> in general, what do you do? Because I've seen this mostly on the West Coast, but what do you do when you mm -hmm. pull up to a charging spot that is handicapped mm -hmm. and charging at the same time? Like my hotel a few nights ago, actually in Utah, was a handicapped space, but it was also the only one with an EV charger. So I didn't charge. What are you supposed to do? Yeah, so my apartment complex actually has a situation as well. Um, in California, to my knowledge, they're the only ones that specifically call out how that should be handled. And the primary purpose is for EV charging. So typically the best practice is to sign it as use last. And it's more about the spacing of the site or the space itself. So you have a van accessible spot, which is typically a 12 foot parking spot with a five foot aisle and clear space around it for van accessibility, essentially. But as far as best practice goes, you would not sign that as reserved parking. You would sign that as use last unless you have scale. Because if you have 50 spots, you can reserve one. But if you have four spots, it doesn't really make any sense to be reserving it because you need all the capacity there you can get. Totally agree. That makes sense. That's always been my thing. And I've only ever seen the use the last signage when we're talking about uh, Tesla installations, actually. Yeah when they have the back end or the pull through ones, uh, mm -hmm. where like if you have a trailer or something, they usually use last reserve for bike racks or use last reserve for handicap. We have one here in Estes Park that says that. Yeah, Tesla does a really good job about that because they are they have pretty uniform design across the country because they're handling a lot of that centrally or at least um, approvals centrally, I believe. Um, but a lot of the other networks are a lot more fragmented in how they implement their site design and. Uh, they more go with whatever the local code is versus what is a best practice. So let's pull back up this EV go mm -hmm. station because we're talking about layout. We're not talking about how far away from the storefront mm -hmm. should they be, how far off the highway. This is like roll up. A couple things I look for, for example, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that if I was putting in a charging station that every possible port can be used simultaneously, which mm -hmm. means there's never a situation where we have available charging power, but a car can't actually get to it. Correct. And this one's a little bit of a gray area, I think, because two of the simultaneous charging units are only 100 kilowatt total power. And if you are splitting that in half, it's maybe not the best charging experience. But I know I would personally rather have 50 kilowatts than zero kilowatts. Yeah. Uh, this okay. side, yeah. And another thing on this site is that they actually don't have any bollards in front of their disconnects, which you can see uh, kind of in the middle of the spot there, which is also pretty interesting in my opinion. And the disconnects are not locked and they're very obvious in the site. The equipment is not screened at all with the fence. I would be concerned that someone with malicious intent would just go turn off the entire site. Which they can oh, and, very easily do. Yep, just two kachunks, that thing's offline. And it's not like, you know, my mom's going to roll up and know to flip the big breaker. That's a send a yeah. maintenance technician out and fix that. Can we bring up another example of maybe a bad site before we start talking about what the perfect site design would look like? Mm -hmm. 
And this would be recently, uh, I was testing the Hummer EV in mm -hmm. Arizona and I pulled up to a DC fast charging station in a huge vehicle. Let's be totally transparent here, but this is still a type of vehicle, big electric pickup trucks that we need mm -hmm. to charge. These are users and especially in middle America mm -hmm. here in Northern Colorado, F-150 Lightnings, Hummer EV, Silverados, Rivian R1Ts, they're getting mm -hmm. popular. And in this particular instance, the charging port's in the back left location, which is actually my favorite location for a charging port, one of them at least, mm -hmm. maybe not when towing, but I do like mm -hmm. it you know, at least open. And I had to pull this thing all the way up to the curb and stretch that unit in front's cable all the way back, got every last inch out of it. If it was cold and shriveled up another <laughs> millimeter, it wouldn't have reached. Um, and that's mostly because that ID4 was using that one to the left. So mm -hmm. this is the last available spot. Brandon, what could have been done here to make this a better installation? Well, if you had made more than one of them a van accessible spot and you could use the use last ADA accessible spot, that would have actually done well for the Hummer in this case. Um, but I encountered this quite a few times in my Rivian when I just did my 12 state, nearly 4,000 mile road trip. A lot of the spots simply weren't long enough. I was hanging out the back and I was concerned that someone not paying attention was just going to come in and sideswipe my bedside. <laughs> but yeah. I think a lot of these sites were designed for the compact car with the correlation essentially of, oh, well, every EV is going to be a compact car, not thinking that here in 2022, we have a whole assortment of EV trucks that are not small. Yeah, yeah I was lucky. The bolt was next to him. <laughs> well, I had yeah. to climb out the passenger side just to get out of this thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was so big. But if that was even an ID4, you probably wouldn't have been able to climb out even the passenger side. It would have been too tight. Because ID4 yeah. is decently small, but it's not that small. Well, and I think a lot of these weird errors and issues in tight parking spaces arise from two things. One, it costs money to have space. So, of course, mm -hmm. you want to go for the, the lowest amount of space in a parking lot if it's not your own parking lot. Some charge point operators also own the parking lot, and in that case, use up the space. Uh, Brandon, you know that world pretty well. You don't have to worry. Well, it's not always that simple either. Okay. Well, that's, that's an interesting point. Space does come at a premium, but yeah. also I think the other side of it is a lot of people designing charging sites don't live with an electric car, but we should yeah. also mention that designing a site to fit every possible vehicle on the market today and every mm -hmm. maybe conceivable vehicle to come out in the future is really tough unless you're doing it the way Tesla does it, which is they design the chargers, the cars, the handles, the charge port locations. And so they can build and place their charge ports to fit their existing network. There could, yeah. There's so many startup manufacturers. For example, a school bus was charging at an EA station I saw on Twitter, blocked the whole thing. I mean, you just can't plan for every eventuality. Yeah, and yeah. what's interesting is that some of the state's NEVI plans are actually calling for planning for future medium duty and heavy duty vehicles which is a very interesting clause because typically light duty charging simply won't work for medium and heavy duty unless you're building an oversized site to begin with. But having the charge ports in all sorts of different locations on the vehicle, they could be essentially any corner of the vehicle. They could be nearly halfway down the side of the vehicle like the F-150 Lightning or the e-tron or the Mach-E. It, it's very difficult. If we all just settled on one charge port location, well, effectively two, you could have it on driver rear or passenger front. Effectively, those are the same. Uh, so you're either backing in or you're doing nose in, depending on the vehicle type. Then we would have a lot less problems. And they're actually doing that to an extent with medium and heavy duty. As part of the MCS standard, it has to be directly behind the cab on the driver's side. So that will simplify those site designs. Very interesting. That's smart. But I think with light duty, we're, we're past that point. There's just no way. What do you I think? don't think we're past that point. The, the market's still pretty immature. I think we could standardize ports and it'd be a confusing couple of years, but I think long term it would be for the best if we did. Okay, fair enough. So we know what bad site designs are. These are designs where you pull up mm -hmm. to a parking lot. They're either way too tight where you can't even get into where you want to go mm -hmm. or there's just available charging power that you can't actually physically get to your car. Um, mm -hmm. And it's always nice, I think, to have backup options to get to chargers as well, because like yeah. the other day I ran into my local EA station with my Leaf 
and I had to charge the car, but someone was actually blocking the charger, not charging, you know, so maybe you shouldn't design for this, but I thought it was great because there was just a little walkway behind my EA station and then mm -hmm. more parking spaces. So I was able to actually approach it from the backside, stretch yeah. the cable across <laughs> the walkway, and then I was charging as a fail safe. Yeah, I think yeah. that's actually really smart site design is to have the chargers on an island of sorts that you can access it from either side. It also makes it easier if you're towing because you can just pull alongside that curb. And even if you're along the entire curb, you're not blocking anyone else from charging and you can just pull the cable to the backside, assuming the cable is long enough. And Tesla has actually done this at their site in, in Northern Minnesota. It's just South of Duluth, but they it's have a awesome. Tesla site that does exactly that. Well, also Ogallala, I think has it this way at the Tesla site. Uh, one of the Nebraska. Yeah, so. Yep. And also uh, many EA stations in Snoqualmie, the EA station, I did this with the Rivian where it was nighttime, empty parking lot. I just pulled up behind uh, when I had mm -hmm. a trailer on there. So that's a really good thing to have. What else would go into good charging station design? Yeah, I think basically just continuing the design of having that you can pull alongside with pull through site design. And a great example of that is actually Nebenes in Norway. Uh, that's a, huge v2 site it's actually now open to all vehicles and i actually charged a kia soul there and it was great because even though it was a tesla site with short cables intended for uh driver rear charge port with a front charge port kia soul i could still charge because you can just align yourself along the side of it however necessary without blocking others yeah, I've also been to this site and really love it. I've charged a couple different vehicles there. Just a wonderful place. Plus, not too far away, you can get Espa buns. So that's always good. Um, but <laughs> no, seriously, these pull-through sites are hugely space intensive. That's the problem. Yeah. When we start talking about having to rent out parking lot space, you know, on highway corridors, when you have a lot of room, this is the ideal situation, I would say. When you're uh, in an inner city environment and you're trying to put chargers in the back of a parking lot that's busy, that's already you know space compact, mm -hmm. what is the best solution for that? From what I found, at least, is similar to our local EA station in Loveland, with, which maybe some of our viewers are familiar with. It's just lining them up in a row and just pull in, yeah. back in, whatever you need to do to get there. And put it yeah, in and even if it's not the intended use to be able to pull along the backside, as long as the drive aisle or whatever's on the backside is wide enough that other cars can still get by, it, it's generally workable. Uh, but a lot of AHJs or uh, the local jurisdictions, they actually have requirements for drive aisle sizes. And if you can reach it, sometimes it gets a little tricky because it could be a potential code violation. Very interesting. Yeah. So let's say you had to design your perfect site. Let's say we want to have, I don't know, four stalls, although I think we're going to probably see a trend towards eight stalls minimum going forwards in some places. Mm -hmm. How would you lay them out? What percentage would be pull through? What percentage would be static lined up next to each other? Would you do simultaneous charging? What do you think is the ideal situation? In a perfect world, I would have them all be pull through. Uh, there's a reason that every gas station everywhere is pull through because it simply works. Um, gas fueling does have a shorter dwell time, which makes it a little bit easier. Um, but it's also actually really good for queuing to have a pull through because it's generally one way traffic. Uh, and especially if you have a long enough charge cable that it can reach most charge port locations, or you can even either just pull not as far forward or farther forward, depending on your charge port location. Uh, so I would probably do a charge island with a, probably a break in the middle as a bailout of sorts or to just give that flexibility for if you have a longer vehicle, a small trailer, something like that. Uh, and then it's pretty easily scalable because you can just put more either side by side or you can stack them uh, in the line essentially as long as you have adequate spacing between them. So depending on the shape of the lot. Right. And, and of course, that's more expensive than doing it the traditional way, but ultimately mm -hmm. leads to a better charging experience. And I think that needs to be the trend going forward. So the Nordic countries have proven uh, and have spent the money to make these, these mm -hmm. networks and these charging stations have better user experience and not so much focus on the cost. And of course, to the end user, it's wonderful. But of course, 
we're not the ones fronting the bill uh, for these things yeah. as users. So it's not always up to us what we want. Yeah, a lot of it comes down to whether they're being built as greenfield or brownfield installations. So greenfield meaning that it's just an open field, nothing's been there before, or brownfield meaning that it's been constructed on before and you're having to remove things. Um, but if you have a greenfield installation, the actual cost of doing pull through versus doing back in is pretty much negligible because you're going to be paving the whole thing anyway. You might have a slightly longer conduit and wire runs, but it's not the significant factor in that. And we should really be pushing for that, especially as these bigger installations with a huge scale are coming up. A lot of those are being built in those greenfield sites. Uh, a lot of those new Tesla sites are great examples of that. Yeah. Yeah. We saw that in Germany. I mean, that the Zeus Marhausen one where mm -hmm. the really high powered DC fast chargers were all pull through. We saw buses using them. Like anything could just stop in, charge for a bit and then keep going. And then they mm -hmm. also had all the still DC fast chargers, but slower, like thinking 35 kilowatt or so for people who wanted to stay longer, but still charge faster than level two. And they even had some level mm -hmm. two. That was a really cool installation that covered a lot of bases for all different types and needs of charging. But yeah, the ones where we're, as we were progressing with faster and faster speeds, people are road tripping more. We're thinking about what is the shorter charge times. And then that's when pull through really makes sense. Like you said, with the shorter dwell time at the gas station, that's really the future. It's just how soon do we get to those really short charge times? I mean, in a lot of cases, we're already at that point with the Tycon, the EGMP cars, yeah. Or as we have more station density, uh, even the slower charging, not as long range cars will be able to just do those 15, 20 minute stops and still make it to the next one. Even if you have like my Rivian, I can charge a 70%. That's like 25 ish minutes. But if we had higher station density, I'd only be charging to say 50%, yeah. staying over 200 kilowatts and being able to move on. And yeah. another thing is that with the, uh, nose in or back in spots you can put those around the perimeter of pull through kind of like what they're doing in zeus marshausen where you have that as your slower more destination type charging but you have the quick turn low dwell time fastest charging as pull through yeah i think it'd be great to have both the more we see stations needing more chargers because it really is a wide variety of people. There's people who are kind of just slow charging for the week versus people who are trying to get somewhere in a hurry. And it's, it is hard with the land use because you just don't have that many spots sometimes, but for the stations that are like, like you said, the green ones that are freshly built with the future in mind, I think that's really an ideal future. Mm -hmm. So all, uh, all we're asking for is pull throughs, baby. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> exactly. Or at least some of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all of them. <laughs> Great. Well, that was a fun show. Appreciate that, Brandon. Yeah, we've Absolutely. solved it. So um, hopefully that we see more of those. But yeah, thanks, thanks for joining. Uh, check out Brandon, of course, in the description below. And we'll uh, have more episodes with Brandon and other people out in the, uh, the industry as we discuss mm -hmm. and basically keep solving problems for everyone. You know, that's what we do. <laughs> Yeah, and if there's All topics right. you guys want us to cover, comment down below, reach out on Twitter, email, whatever. Uh, we're certainly open to the, those specific charging topics that you guys want to know more about. That was a mistake. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next show very soon. <laughs> <laughs>